these ominous rumbling sounds? The ground shaking under your feet? Wait a minute, that's my tummy. Or it might be Washington State's Mount Adams waking up. It's the largest volcano in the state by both area and volume, and it's recently started to show signs of life after staying silent for thousands of years. Scientists have noticed an alarming uptick in seismic activity around the mountain. And since the last eruption here happened between 3,800 and 7,600 years ago, humanity was still in the Stone Age at that time. This sudden chattiness has scientists, let's say, curious. The U.S. Geological Survey has hurriedly installed temporary seismic stations around Mount Adams to keep an eye on the situation. At the same time, they reassure the public there's no need to panic. Mount Adams doesn't reach the height of the better-known Mount Rainier. And still, it covers a massive area, making it Washington's largest active volcano. Interestingly, records show that before September of this year, Mount Adams had experienced an average of just one small earthquake every two to three years since 1982. And then, the Cascades Volcano Observatory and the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network detected a staggering six earthquakes in just one month, September. These quakes were all rather tiny, with magnitudes ranging between 0.9 and 2 on the Richter scale. It means they were so weak you wouldn't feel them at the surface. Plus, satellite imagery confirmed there was no ground deformation in the area. Now at the moment, the USGS keeps Mount Adams' alert level at green or normal, so we shouldn't worry about the ground opening and swallowing towns and cities. But the most recent seismic blips have encouraged the agency to install additional equipment for more precise monitoring. Such an expanded network will help scientists notice even the smallest earthquakes, which will help them understand what's happening under Mount Adams. This extra equipment might also shed light on whether this recent activity is a signal of future eruptions or just a random anomaly. If Mount Adams eventually erupted, it would likely produce slow-moving lava flows rather than explosive eruptions like Mount St. Helens. After all, past eruptions have only led to lava flows that travel just a few miles from the volcano. So that's not what we'd need to worry about. A much more dangerous thing would be lahars. These are mud flows that can happen when volcanic ash, rock, and melted ice mix during eruptions. Lahars have occurred near Mount Adams without even eruptions. Rock, weakened by hydrothermal processes at the volcano's summit, suddenly broke loose, creating fast-moving, destructive mud flows. Exactly for this reason, the USGS categorizes Mount Adams as a high-threat volcano. While it doesn't erupt frequently, it still poses serious risks to nearby settlements. Another volcano we should carefully watch is Katla in Iceland. It's one of the country's most powerful and dangerous volcanoes. It last erupted over a century ago, in 1918. But if it erupts again, it could be 10 times as powerful as another Icelandic volcano whose name I can't pronounce. See? That one erupted in 2010, completely disrupting air travel all over Europe. An eruption of Katla could release large amounts of sulfur dioxide, which could form sulfate aerosols in the atmosphere. Such aerosols reflect sunlight, which could even cause temporary global cooling. This phenomenon often followed catastrophic volcanic eruptions in the past. Although eruptions are common in Iceland, Katla's ash cloud would likely shoot higher into the sky and cover larger areas of Europe than that other one did. It would ground flights and negatively affect economies. If Katla erupted, it would also harm agriculture, water supplies, and air quality. In 2014, scientists noted that a large eruption could even cause a tsunami that might travel along Iceland's south coast and out to sea. But the potential impact of such a tsunami is still unclear. Katla tends to erupt on a regular schedule every 40 to 80 years, which means that another eruption is statistically very likely soon. That's why Katla remains under close scientific observation. The Canary Islands Cumbra Viea erupted recently in 2021, reminding people of its destructive potential. The lava flow from this eruption was devastating. It covered whole neighborhoods and flowed into the ocean, destroying more than 3,000 homes. Thousands of people had to be evacuated. But the craziest thing? Even though the damage was significant, 
scientists believe it could have been far worse. A massive eruption of Cumbra Vieja could have caused the volcano's entire western flank to collapse into the Atlantic Ocean, triggering a mega-tsunami. This hypothetical tsunami could have potentially created waves hundreds or even thousands of feet high. They could have flooded coastlines around the Atlantic Basin, including parts of the US and Europe. Luckily, recent studies claim that a collapse of that scale is unlikely. But even though the chance of a mega-tsunami is low, scientists still think it's wise to prepare for possible eruptions because there's a chance of extensive damage. The lava flows that occur at this volcano tend to be extensive and dangerous to both human life and the infrastructure on the island. If you decide to travel to Ecuador, you should be wary of Cotopaxi, one of the most active volcanoes in this country. It's been rumbling with minor eruptions since 2022. While these eruptions have been relatively small, Cotopaxi's has a great potential for a major eruption. And it has scientists on high alert. If Cotopaxi erupted on a large scale, it could produce a massive ash cloud over 12 miles high threatening the lives of around 200,000 people in the neighboring area. A serious danger is Cotopaxi's snow-capped summit. It would melt super rapidly in a major eruption. It could lead to destructive floods and landslides that would flow down the mountain and potentially reach populated areas. This combination of volcanic activity and glacial floods makes Cotopaxi a high-risk volcano. A powerful eruption could occur soon, or it could be years or even decades away. But monitoring efforts are in place to catch any warning signs. The next volcano we should watch out for is already infamous, Mount Vesuvius. Its catastrophic eruption in 79 CE destroyed the Roman cities of Pompeii and Herculaneum. Its last eruption occurred in 1944, but Vesuvius remains highly active and poses a great risk to nearby Naples, one of Italy's largest cities. A large eruption would threaten over 3 million people. Many of them live in the vicinity or even directly on the slopes of the volcano. If Vesuvius erupted, it would be an explosive event, with ash, rocks, and volcanic gas ejected at extremely high speeds. And even though such a destructive event isn't expected for a few hundred years, Vesuvius remains one of the world's most closely watched volcanoes. After all, it has a real potential to cause catastrophic damage in a densely populated area. Then, we have Popocatépetl, often called El Popo. It's one of North America's tallest active volcanoes, which lies about 40 miles from Mexico City. Exactly this proximity to a metropolitan area with a population of 22 million people makes Popocatépetl especially hazardous. A large eruption could send a massive ash cloud over Mexico City, causing widespread disruptions. Ash could clog the city's drainage systems, contaminate water supplies, and even cause power outages by short-circuiting electrical systems. Plus, lahars could rush down the volcano, reaching nearby towns. Popocatépetl has been showing near-constant seismic activity since the early 2000s, and smaller eruptions are pretty common here. In early 2024, there were 13 recorded minor eruptions, which alarmed nearby towns. At the same time, volcanologists consider such eruptions normal for Popocatépetl. While talking about super dangerous volcanoes, we can't skip Yellowstone National Park. It houses one of the world's largest supervolcanoes. Its last massive eruption occurred about 640,000 years ago. But if this monster were to erupt today, the impact would be much more devastating for the entire planet. States closest to Yellowstone, including Montana, Idaho, and Wyoming, would be most affected, likely experiencing disastrous pyroclastic flows. These flows, which are made of a dangerous mix of lava, ash, and gases, can obliterate everything in their path. Large parts of the country would also be blanketed in volcanic ash, over 3 feet in some areas. On a global scale, an eruption at Yellowstone would send tons of ash and gases into the stratosphere, potentially blocking sunlight and causing global temperatures to drop for a few years. This would disrupt agriculture, collapse transportation systems, and create food shortages on a massive scale. 
Still, even though there's a popular myth that Yellowstone is overdue for an eruption, geologists clarify that this isn't true. Volcanoes don't follow precise timetables, and the activity at Yellowstone doesn't indicate an imminent eruption. So yeah, that's good news. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.